Hi everybody. I just wanted to record a commentary track for this video. Uh, this is my All Flags World Record video on Current Patch. I got this in a race against Luigi, our weekly races uh, in the semifinals of the tournament. So my mic is muted because of the restream happening on uh, Mr. Dino's channel. Uh, but I just want to go talk a little bit about the run, about what's going on here, share my thoughts. Uh, in the beginning there, I lost two seconds because I, for one thing, wasn't mashing start fast enough in the beginning, wasn't dashing properly, and then most of all, I forgot to, uh, or I missed, I made, a, I had a little misstep with the exit to menu, or exit to map, rather. I missed it the first time. Uh, this Force Follies, however, was very good. I did make a few mistakes. I have a tendency to probably overly criticize my videos whenever I'm watching myself play, and I know it's going to happen. Uh, it was actually a very good force follow. It was just a very few small mistakes. Got five dashes there. That was nice. See, I fell into the pit there. That was a mistake. I usually get two dashes there, but I got a very nice bounce under the acorn machine, and I managed to pull off a 33. Very solid time. By the way, apologies for the Poor quality. I'm not sure why the quality is too bad. The original video is pretty good. I'll have to link that in the description in case you want to watch the uh, original video where you can actually read the splits. But anyway, solid time in Force Follies. It's a gold split. Uh, granted, my most of my all flags runs were before I had live split in a PC. So as you can see, this is <laughs> single digit for the attempts. So I don't have very great splits yet. Uh, Treetop Trouble <laughs> was an incredibly bad run. For one thing here, I tried to get this coin without parrying uh, to save a very small amount of time on the result screen, 0.8 seconds. Uh, however, because of that, I wasted, I believe I lost two cycles potentially on this platform section. I also missed that platform there, and I believe I missed it a second time. Yes, I missed it a second time. Uh, so my potential time right now is already <laughs> at least eight seconds lower than it could have been. Ideally, it, it's possible, it's very, very difficult, but it's possible to get all the coins on this level without a parry in uh, 41 seconds, maybe even 40 seconds. Uh, but because I missed a cycle on the platforms twice, I cost myself, it, it, each cycle lost costs about four seconds. So I lost about eight or nine seconds from my potential score. As you can see, my split there is plus 12.4 seconds on that split alone. <laughs> I got a one minute time there. So I didn't even have that great of a time on my PB before that. Uh, like I said, you could potentially get low 40s, 41. Usually if you miss one cycle, it's, you get a 45. I must have missed like three or four cycles at least. So right there, I could have potentially saved like eight seconds, but I lost 12. Uh, shop was clean, I got shop glitch. Uh, you're going to want to buy Spread, Lobber, and Charge for this category. My menuing was a little poor there. Could have definitely been better. I forgot where Charge and Lobber were, uh, were in the menu, so I wasn't able to equip them that quickly. The root pack fight overall is pretty solid. You're going to want to avoid parries because parries cost time on the results screen. They don't save you enough time to, to warrant the time loss on the results screen. Did some quick switches to use my charge EX on the onion. Here you want to start a little bit away from the onion in that phase and then move closer to it. Uh, carrot phase, you want to time your charge EXs for when the carrots are nearby so that you can destroy them. Uh, that was a mistake right there. I accidentally shot a Spread EX instead. Cost myself maybe a second or two on the fight. I believe I got a 42 on this. Yeah, 42. I've definitely gotten 40 before. Uh, ideally, on the carrot, you could actually kill him before he shoots any of his beams. But right there, I, uh, I think I killed him right before he shot a second beam. So a little bit slower than normal. But the split was basically even. Uh, Ruby and Croaks. I had a solid fight. But I uh, missed the second phase skip. It's been a while since I played current patch. I didn't really remember how to get the second phase skip. 
and at this point I still don't really remember, I haven't practiced it since then, you might have to get the flies pattern first and get him to do two attacks in the first phase. No, there's gotta be a way. There's gotta be a way. I think I might have to intentionally take damage as they're rolling from left to right, or right to left, and then shoot a couple spread EXs inside of their hitboxes to hit both of them at the same time. Uh, but nevertheless, I had a one attack second phase, which is pretty standard if you missed the second phase skip. Uh, here it got a little bit dicey, because the bull RNG is not what you want to get. <laughs> it's just very difficult to get consistent spread damage. Also, I took a hit right there, and this part I almost died. Very, very close. Couldn't use spread there. I tried to get one last charge shot before we finished the attack, but unfortunately I didn't get it. Um, I think it's possible even to one cycle the slot machine, although I've never done it in a run. Close I've had it is so you can kill the slot machine immediately as he opens for the second attack. That was a little bit slow there. I lost almost four seconds compared to my PB. And I got a, a 110 for the time. I've gotten low one minutes in runs before. I think a 104 might be my best. 103 around there. So already <laughs> I've lost 15 seconds compared to my PB. Run is not starting out looking that good. Still fairly confident about the race at this point. Uh, because I know I'm very experienced with Whetstone, so once that comes into play, I should save time on Luigi, regardless of how well he's doing. I did change up my uh, Goopy strat a little bit from how I used to do this in current patch. I used to only shoot charge shots in the first phase, but I alternated between charge shots and spread uh, whenever I could manage it. Also there, I used to just shoot charge EXs, but I, d I decided to take a damage boost and shoot, shoot two spread EXs and spread the spready X does slightly more damage. Here is a pretty standard. You want to take a damage boost on him while he's dying, and then shoot all of your spready X's and leave one card by the time he goes away, and then you can just finish him off with a charge shot with the charge EX, which I did there. Fairly clean fight. Still could be, I believe, two seconds faster. I think 34 is a pretty ideal time for that. And that was a 36. Uh, moving on to Hildeberg. Hildeberg is basically the same in every category, uh, especially for current patch. On current patch, you can't get the Hilda glitch. They uh, patch that out, so the best you can do is a phase skip on the uh, second transformation phase, uh, which I get in this run. I actually have a very solid Hilda, so you'll see right here. It didn't really feel that solid at the time, but the end time was a 105, which is very good for current patch. Take that damage boost so you can shoot at EX as she's moving from left to right. Make sure you get this parry. Dodge the attack. Get constant damage on Hilda and hope she doesn't do the tornado attack, which she does do the tornado attack, I believe. No, she doesn't. Okay. Alright, good. Oh, wait, actually, I don't think I got the second phase skip. I barely got enough hard energy. Luckily, that minion was there because that gave me just enough energy to get that EX missile to shoot when she moved from left to right, which is huge. That's definitely something that you don't want to miss. I got the final phase transition after one attack, which is pretty standard. Ideally, you could actually get the final phase transition before Hilda even attacks there, but it's pretty difficult. Usually, you can only get that with the tornado attack in the second haha -ha phase. Uh, my EX missile stuck very well, and at this point, normally you'd move forward to get that yellow UFO to attack, but I knew that Hilda was low on HP, so I just stayed at the back of the screen. Luckily, my bullets killed her before the UFO got there. Because otherwise, the UFO shoots and blocks some of your bullets, and it's a big time loss. So I got a nice gold split on Hilda, saved 5.2 seconds over my PB. We moved on to Cagney. Cagney's a fun fight on this. It's not that difficult of a fight, although I believe Luigi actually died in his run on Cagney from playing a little too aggressively. And I play aggressively near the end of this as well, you'll see. Uh, but for the most part, you just want to use well-timed charge shots. I mix in some spread every now and then. Uh, you could go for parries on this. I don't think I go for parries. 
But usually if I could see an opportunity to get three or four parries, I'll take it just because of uh, the additional DPS. At this point in the final phase, you want to switch to spread because you can hit him with all your shots whenever you're standing at the front of the first platform. I decided to use that damage that I took there to damage boost because I thought Cagney was almost dead, but Cagney had a little bit more health than I thought. I don't think I could have stayed there. I think I would have died if I uh, didn't get back on the platform. But that split is very close to even. 40 is a good fight for that. I believe I've gotten 39, or maybe even 38 once or twice. So it could have been slightly better. One of my charge shots, I uh, shot too early, so it didn't give the full damage. But yeah, I lost 0.1 seconds, so pretty close to even split. I go into aisle 2 at a uh, plus 10. Still a solid run overall, but uh, that huge mistake on uh, True Top Trouble definitely cost me. Going to aisle 2, I actually changed the path a bit from my PB uh, after watching Wolf, because Wolf had world record at this point with a, uh, I want to say a 38-25 uh, uh, was Wolf's record, and he had a death in Funfair Fever. Uh, first phase on Baroness, by the way, uh, against the Cupcake. I got the first shot on him as he came out, which is very difficult to do. You have to basically plan for it. You have to rush toward the right side of the screen right when the level starts and shoot your charge EX in one of the first two frames that you can uh, shoot it in order to hit him before he flies up. Although I did miss one of my charge shots. Here, I got trolled a little bit. She took out her gun, which is not good. If you get a minion that dies faster at the end, then you can kill her. Uh, you can get her to spawn the final phase before she takes out her gun. Luckily, on current patch, it doesn't cost as much as on Legacy because on Legacy, if she takes out her gun, then she's invulnerable until she starts moving the castle. But I think they fixed that on current patch, so you can still damage her. It's just not ideal because you have to dodge the uh, the gun attack before you can get up there and do some damage. So yeah, I just did some some jumps and spread EXs while inside her hitbox, and you don't get hit there until she throws her head or if you get hit by the castle. Funfair Fever. Uh, this could have been better. I started out extremely well. This is a very good beginning. You want to get all the coins at this point so you can buy a whetstone later. Uh, ideally, if you do that first part fast enough, you only get two balloons to spawn, which is what happened there. If you do it even a little bit slower, not, like half a second slower, you'll get three balloons to spawn, which doesn't really make that much of a difference. The third balloon's not very difficult to dodge, but it's still just a, an indication that you're not going as fast as you can. That was a uh, mistake. I did not intend to clip through that. If you jump there and dash at the uh, right frame on the top, you clip through that, which could be good if you're doing it intentionally, but I was not there, so I took damage. Normally you do not want to be going into this section on 1 HP because it's very dangerous, and you lose out the opportunity to just damage boost through the hot dog at the end. So I had to play it cautiously and uh, kill the hot dog. He dies in three charge shots, so it's not too bad. Still lost some time on that split, but not too much. But it's a 56 on the time. Uh, from grinding All Flags Legacy and getting all the coins there and full clear Legacy, I know that you can definitely get in the 40s on that. I've gotten 47s and 48s quite regularly, so I potentially lost 7 or 8 seconds there. Right now I just did some quick menuing and switched to Lobber, which isn't used in the plane fights at all, but I need it for the Grim Matchstick fight next, so I figured I might as well use it now. At this point I realized that I forgot to pick up bombs uh, on my way up to Funfair Fever. I go back and get them later, and honestly it doesn't make that much of a difference, because once you get Whetstone you'll be using that for the majority of the time on plane fights. And I'm not convinced that you need to get bombs at all in the all-flags route, although I do end up getting them before Jimmy, just because I'm used to it. But if I ever redo this, I might just consider not getting bombs at all. I believe bombs cost about 7 seconds to get in the dialogue and uh, animation. And I just don't think it's really necessarily worth it, because I don't think you're saving 7 seconds with them over the course of the run with Whetstone. Pretty good execution on Wally so far. I do get a little unlucky with the RNG here from him moving left. 
Luckily, I have 3 HP going into this phase, so I can damage boost up whenever he uses the heart attack, and then I can damage boost back down to get inside an area where I can shoot an EX missile and hit as far as possible. I got a big gold split here, but it's a little misleading. On my old route, I went from Grim Matchstick to Wally Warbles, which is a longer walking route. Uh, not to mention, I think there's a... Uh, Longer animation for... Oh yeah, you get the contract for Grim also, and you don't get the contract animation whenever you leave Funfair Fever, so... A longer route cons uh, combined with the contract animation artificially adds time to the split. And the same with this Grim Matchstick split. I usually go to Grim Matchstick from Funhouse Frazzle on my old route, but since I had to go see the Wally Warbles contract and take this long walk, uh, this split is actually not as bad as it ends up looking like. This fight was pretty solid. I definitely made a couple mistakes. Right there, I got hit by uh, the first of those three bursts of rings. Uh, the reason why I use Lobber for this fight is because you can shoot charge shots and then switch to Lobber for the EX. Charge EX requires you to be very close and Spread EX requires you to be in the boss's hitbox. Right there, I shot a charge shot a little too early. On current patch, Grimm's hitbox doesn't... Uh, become hittable, or he doesn't start taking damage until once he opens his mouth and finishes that flying in animation. I shot the first charge shot a little too early for that. Also, this char charge shot shared sailed right over his hitbox. He has a very low hitbox there whenever he's transitioning from second to third phase. Now he has a large hitbox. I got hit by a fireball there. I'm down to 1 HP. Normally I'd play safe, but I don't know. I'm not really known for playing safe even when I should in tournaments. So yeah, I played aggressively there. It shows I lost 10 seconds, but realistically that's probably like a 4 or 5 second loss um, due to the different routing. 102 is a solid time. I've gotten sub 1, uh, sub one minute many times though. If I didn't miss 2 charge shots and get hit by uh, a fireball in the final phase, it would have been a little faster. I go and grab this hidden coin. I think on the old route, I grabbed a hidden coin back on aisle one, but this one's more in the way. I do make a mistake here. Normally, you want to hit the card two cards before that, and then flip so you can land on those race cars, so you can do this glitch. Uh, but I forgot about that while I was doing this, so I had to run to the wall to get the iframes to clip through that. Very precise trick. Very difficult to go into the details right now while this is going on, but basically you take damage on something while you have the invincibility frames. You have to reverse gravity and stand on a little invisible ledge that's about a pixel large, and then do a high jump there, which gives you just enough height to pass through the wall and clip through it. Uh, same at the end right there. The strat used to be a little bit different, but if you fall into the ceiling pit and have it bounce you up, that puts you at the exact right height for you to clip through the wall on the right side. So you basically just fall to that pit and hold right. It looks a lot harder and a lot cooler than it actually is, but you basically just fall into the pit and then hold right. I was very close to even split. I could have saved another two seconds on that. Uh, but like I said, I made a few mistakes in the beginning. Here we're gonna shop glitch on heart. We're gonna buy heart, Harry sugar, coffee, and whetstone. You're buying coffee and whetstone during the loading screen here. And I go back to uh, equipping spread and I switch to whetstone. And then I pick up bombs here, which I almost forget to pick up bombs here. Like I said, you don't really need to pick up bombs. It's kind of a time loss. I'll have to, I'll have to revisit that later. I wasn't really used to using whetstone on Jimmy because I have not played this fight with whetstone in a while. And on my old route, I didn't get a whetstone until after the Isle 2 bosses. So I don't get as many hits in as I wanted to. Flying bosses have very strange hitboxes, so if you're using whetstone, it's a little bit tricky. Here I make a mistake. I did not mean to fill my super meter. I thought I could do this and have a little bit of time, but I accidentally filled my super meter there. What I intended to do was shoot EX missiles on these last two pieces of wall, because that does more damage than what I'm doing there, and then shoot an EX missile when he opens up here. But instead, I have a nuke, so I just used it here. Switched the bomb really quick and then hammered him with Webstone a few times. And then normally if I'd done the other strat, I'd have an EX missile to shoot here, 
while he's appearing in this phase. Try to get some whetstone hits, but like I said, I'm not familiar with how his hitbox is. It's very precise, and then his hitbox changes while he's doing that animation. Here's very dangerous. Sometimes that hat doesn't move as many times as he did there. Because he moved so close, it was a little bit dicey. Luckily, I got the parries, and I got my nuke before the hat was able to kill me, and then I was able to get some more whetstone hits and finish off the puppet. Uh, this part's actually very easy. I don't even think I needed to move away. I could have just stayed at the very bottom of the screen, which is what I usually do, and then just kill him with whetstone before any of the, thing, any of the projectiles can hit me. 123 is a solid fight, though. It's definitely faster than what I could have gotten without whetstone. Usually without whetstone, I think the best I could do is a 124, so it's comparable. But you could definitely get around like a 115 with whetstone strats if you play it better than I did. So I did lose 7 seconds on that split. Debbie the Clown, though, this is an excellent fight to use whetstone on because getting the Beppy glitch on current patch without whetstone is extremely difficult. You need very precise RNG and perfect execution. However, with whetstone, the amount of damage you need to do is a lot more manageable because you can get all these whetstone hits in between. I got lucky enough to have a uh, good RNG pattern. And on that last charge EX, after Beppy falls off, his hitbox is there for just a little bit longer. And that uh, extra time that he's there for enabled me to uh, get that charge EX hit. Here, I uh, didn't play this as well as I could have either. I forgot at this point that I have Whetstone. So I was missing some Whetstone hits on the first couple hits that I could have been using. I tried to parry that pink balloon there. So at this point, when you have the Beppy glitch, it's more safe to just make sure you don't get hurt. But I was down to 1 HP, so I had to play a little bit cautiously. It was a huge gold split, by the way. 17 seconds. And I was a 47 on that. So normally, without the Beppy glitch, the best you're looking at is about a 104, 105 with charge and spread. Better might be possible, but it's tight. So that was a 17 second time save. And now I'm back in the green, which uh, after the beginning of that run is very impressive. And I was back in the green technically at Wally Warbles, but that split wasn't really real because of the different routing. So this is the first time I'm actually ahead of pace going to aisle three. Only 2.5 seconds ahead, which isn't that much. There's definitely more time to be saved. Going to Rumor Honeybottom, this fight could be done as, in as short as 31 seconds if you get really good RNG, but in a run, you don't really want to grind. You don't want to anticipate that. Because it involves a lot of hoping for certain luck. You have a 1 in 3 chance of, of uh, Rumor going and landing in the middle, and that's the only attack pattern where you have a chance of one cycle. But even then, you need perfect platform RNG. So it's something that you... Uh, the odds of it happening are incredibly small. But with a side attack pattern first, if you make sure you don't do enough damage to trigger, trigger final phase, uh, you have a chance of killing Rumor on, on her next attack. So luckily, since she did triangles first, the next attack is going to be middle. Because she uh, cycles her attack, she has three attacks. She has the little pink spheres, she has triangles, and she has the middle with the, the B missiles. And she cycles those attacks in that same order. So... Pink orb, triangles, middle. But where she starts in that pattern is uh, something that changes. It's random. So because she had the triangles attack first, I knew she was going to land in the middle next, and that gives you a chance to kill her before final phase, which is nice. Here I make a mistake. I switch to heart because that's what I normally do on legacy. But because we have whetstone and and we anticipate and we're using whetstone a lot, uh, you don't need to switch to heart. In fact, it's actually less effective to switch to heart because what I end up doing here. On these stone lines, I wait for them to blow, and then I jump over them to avoid taking damage, so I have more damage for the end. But with whetstone, while they're blowing, you could actually... I also get this coin, because I'm used to getting the coins for, for full clear. You don't need to get the coins. But with whetstone, you could actually parry the line while, she, while it's blowing, and then just dash over it. So you don't have to wait for him to stop. And I could just damage boost with heart, but if I damage boost through both stone lines, I am down to 2 HP. But if I had equipped Whetstone, I'd be down to 
Uh, I'd still have 3 HP if I didn't get anywhere else. So Whetstone's definitely a, a better option. So normally I could just parry that, jump right over it. But I played it safe, because I know I'm on good pace, especially after that Rune or Bottom split, which is technically like another fake split. That's not really a 20 second gold. Uh, however, I'm usually I do my shop trip at the end of my last boss on aisle 2, so it's factoring in a shop trip on that split as well. So with 3 HP left, once I get to about here, I can just damage boost to the end. I'll get the, to the last platform before the end. Yeah, right there. Solid Rugged Ridge fight, but or Rugged Rugged Ridge level, but I did lose about two seconds. Ideally, if you use Whetstone and then damage boost at the end, play well, you can get as low as like a, a 116 or so. So I could have saved another 10 or 11 seconds on top of that. Dr. Call's Robot. I had a decent fight, but not a great fight. And right now I switched back to Whetstone. So if I just kept Whetstone on through that, I would have saved time in menuing and saved time in the level itself. Here I forgot my strat. The whole reason that you want to pick up bombs in current patch is so you can bomb the bottom two parts of Dr. Call's robot and damage them both at the same time. However, I totally forgot that that's the reason you get bombs, so I do a less efficient strategy. Also, you can't parry the uh, bottom two parts before the heart comes out on Dr. Paul's robot without taking damage. Here's something interesting happens. I want to do extra damage by parrying right before I use my nuke. But because I did that, the nuke activated a couple frames too late. So only part of the nuke did damage to Dr. Call's robot. So normally, one nuke is enough to just bring Dr. Call to third phase, but because of that, the, the nuke only did maybe half damage or so. Right here, I intentionally used the nuke on a bullet. Right there, I almost died. That was very, very close. Uh, but I used the nuke on a bullet, and then I used the, the, I, the invincibility frames for after using nuke just to do a bunch of whetstone damage, and then I intentionally took damage after that so I could continue doing whetstone hits. I got a 57 on that. Luigi actually had a 50-second fight. Right there, you can see on my expression, <laughs> saying phew, that's an incredibly close fight. Yeah, so I lost another four or five seconds there. Uh, over here, you go to Werner Wormen instead of, instead of Sally Stage Play, because Werner has the path open that's quicker from Rugged Ridge. Uh, this fight is awesome. I love, I love doing this fight so much, because as 2C Plus describes it, it's like you're dancing. I missed a charge shot there. Could have been a little faster. It's like you're dancing on the boss while you're shooting charge shots. And that's the big benefit of using charge. Also right there, you could just use Webstone to, to jump over Werner without having to use those little springs. Uh, I missed another charge shot there. That's fine. For final phase, you want to switch to spread, because spread is stronger than charge, and you can get inside of the boss's hitbox without taking damage. Which, uh, there aren't a lot of bosses where you can actually do this, where you can be inside the boss's hitbox and not get hurt. Other bosses that come to mind include the 8-ball uh, during the King Dice fight, and the Carrot. And also the Devil in the first phase. Or I guess all the phases for the Devil. The Devil himself does not have a hurt box. So yeah, on those, on those fights where you are able to be inside the boss's hitbox, it's usually more beneficial to just use spread, because you can use spread EXs inside of the boss's hitbox. Here I switched to Lobber for Briny, and also I'm supposed to switch to Coffee, but I forgot to do that. And then I remembered right now... <laughs> it speeds up the fight just a little bit. Whetstone is useless against Briny because he's up too high, you cannot hit him. He's too far to the right also, there's an invisible wall, so even if you got high enough, you can't hit him with Whetstone. Right here, we're going to alternate again between spread and lobber EXs. Or, sorry, charge and lobber EXs. Usually I go for parries on him, but I don't need the parries to get a three-cycle final phase. So I opted to not get the parries so I could have a slightly faster result screen. So right there, 
There was enough damage to get the final phase. One cycle's pretty easy. You shoot a charge shot, lobber shot, a lobber EX charge. Basically, you alternate charge and lobber EXs three times, and then you shoot an extra lobber EX, and that's enough to kill him. So that was a gold split. That was a very good time. 42. Uh, IL world record for that's 39. If you get the right RNG, you could get a 39 on that. It's very tight. Perilous Pier is a make or break level. Ideally, you want to get Octopus Skip, which saves about 20 seconds over doing well than normally. But it's very difficult to do. I switch back to Heart because that's the only way that you can do Octopus Skip. To do Octopus Skip, you have to get to the end with all 4 HP and then damage boost a lot. However, I'm bad and I took damage right there trying to dash over the boss, or to dash over that enemy. And I also accidentally got a coin again, forgetting that I don't need to get coins in this category after I get Whetstone. So that's a slight time loss on the results screen. So at this point I'm down to 3 HP, and now I'm down to 2 HP. So I have to play a little bit cautiously. I don't have a chance at Octopus Skip, but I use a lesser known trick that became known to us recently from Studio MDHR themselves. If you shoot the octopus, Octopus goes faster in this section, which makes this, the section much more difficult to deal with. I had some pretty clutch shrimp dodges there. At that point I got the coin because it doesn't really matter, I'm already having the result screen loss. Additional coins don't really matter. Also one thing I forgot that you can do here, you could just dodge the... Uh, those white balls that get shot from the left, you could dodge the bottom one just by ducking. Uh, but right there I saved a lot of time. Normally, without doing that little trick where you hit the octopus, it does, uh, I don't know, take, that level takes about a minute 15 or so. So I saved about 10 seconds. I could have saved another 10 to 15 seconds if I got the octopus skip. At this point, I switch back to Sprags. I'll use that later, and I switch to Whetstone for Calamaria. Calamaria is a uh, very fun fight to do with Whetstone, especially with how much I've played it. You really get a feel for where Calamaria's hitbox is. A couple uh, fun facts, I guess you could say. Once you do enough damage to get Calamaria to transition into second phase, she slowly moves from right to left, so her, her damage box moves as well. At this point, I actually did enough damage as she was going down for the fish, so you didn't really see her inch forward to the left. She's already in her current position by the time she gets up. And then when she, right when she transforms, she slowly moves back to the right. So it's kind of annoying to get whetstone hits there. That's why I just use my nuke so I can move on top of her hitbox a little bit without taking damage while I had iframes. And then once she moves into final phase, her hitbox goes back to the position that it was at, at the beginning of second phase and then slowly moves back to the right again. So that's another downside if you're trying to whetstone her at the end of second phase after she moves to the right, is she'll instantly move back to the left right whenever you hit third phase, which normally damages you. So that's why you want to make sure she goes into third phase while you're still invincible from a nuke. Overall, it was a really solid time. 48 seconds is really good. Compared to non-whetstone times, which are almost always over a minute. In fact, I don't know if you can even get sub one minute without whetstone. So that was a solid time. Could have been a little faster, still lost a couple seconds from some uh, misses on whetstone and some bad RNG. Sally Stage plays another pretty good fight. Another fight where you kind of dance on the boss. <laughs> I missed a charge shot there, my bad. You want to avoid parrying the hearts because the, the extra EX card is not worth the time loss on the results screen. Here she's not actually taking damage until she points. Now she's taking damage. The first charge shot I shot was just to help build my, my cards because you can still build cards on her even if she's not taking damage. It's a pretty clean second phase. You want to get those little mouse cars out of the way. Here I do a combination of... Uh, ooh, this I make a mistake. Normally you can parry, you can whetstone parry off of Sally Stage Play herself and then bounce over that big wave, but I had to use the Meteor instead. Got a pretty quick kill there. You can get some charge shots on her when she's going up from the uh, 
transitioning from a previous phase, and then you can shoot e uh, charge shot, fall by charge EX, and then switch to spread, and that's usually enough damage to finish her at the end. Although I did lose five seconds. That third phase could have been better. Moving on to Phantom Express. Phantom Express is a very difficult fight to do well, especially with the strats I used in the first phase, which are extremely dangerous. Usually I only do them in IL. But hey, YOLO, right? So you want to try to get whetstone hits. Another weird fact about the uh, Phantom's hitbox. Whenever he's actually shooting the eyes, his, his hitbox is moved up much, much farther. Has like two positions there. Very far to the left where he's shooting the eyes out of, and then whenever he's done shooting the eyes, back to the right. Right here I get a uh, pretty quick kill on the second phase. The only way to one-cycle that on current patch is with Super Art 3, I believe. Pretty, pretty difficult to do. Here, I actually get bad RNG. This is a very good third phase, considering. But normally you want the left guy to attack first. Uh, because that way you can do some whetstone hits on the right guy, and then once the left guy moves over to the right guy, you can kill them both with one charge EX if you've done enough damage like I did right there on the left guy. I actually missed my first charge EX on this. That did not do any damage there. Normally you have you do enough damage to kill him after three charge shots and three charge EX shots. But because that first charge EX missed, I had to do uh, an extra charge shot at the end, which cost a little bit of time. I got a 106, which is still a solid time. Saved about four seconds over my PB. Uh, but you can get 101s, 102s on that. So going into King Dice, Isle 3 was a ridiculous time save for me. Going to King Dice, I'm 41 seconds ahead of PB, which is about 23 seconds ahead of world record at this point. And I'm looking to have a solid King Dice fight. Ideally, you want at least one hard on 2, 4, or 8. Uh, but more is better. I got one on 4. So that's good. If you don't get any hearts, then it's kind of a pain. Because um, you do kind of want to take... You want, you want to make sure you have enough to, to tank some damage. Just for damage boost purposes. The chip fight's pretty easy. You can kill him almost as fast on current patch as you can Legacy. You do a lot of, uh, like there's a kind of a little uh, dancing technique I use with, when using whetstone. You whetstone off the boss while you charge a shot, and then you whetstone, use your charge shot, and then immediately use a charge EX. And then you whetstone, and then whetstone charge EX, all kind of in a rhythm like that. Gives you just about enough time to get a whetstone hit in between each charge shot being charged, so gives some extra damage. Domino fight's a little tricky, and luckily I've done this fight enough times where I get a feel for how much damage you need to kill it. So toward the end, whenever I know I'm very close to damage, I switch to Spread EX, like right here, yeah, because I know he's about to die. Killing with Spread is, is a little quicker than using Charge, because if you kill him with a Charge Shot, you risk the you risk over-damaging a little bit. With Spread, he dies immediately when you do enough damage, but because you have to wait about a second for each Charge Shot, it's, potentially you could have killed him quicker with Spread than waiting for Charge. Uh, going on to the 8-ball, this is a nice, easy fight. Like I said before, this is one of the bosses where you can go inside the hitbox. It's no big deal. So you just want to use Spread, go inside the boss's hitbox, use Spread EX. I take intentional damage here. Actually, I wasn't sure if I was going to get hit there. Ideally, if, you, if I'd hit all my Spread EX shots there, two of them missed. You should be able to kill the 8-ball before he shoots his second attack there. It's very close, though. So that was slightly slower than it could have been. Normally on Legacy, it's better to just tank the damage from the cards, because then you could skip the HP bonus on the results screen, but... Current patch works differently, so you're getting the HP bonus regardless. So I figured I might as well just carry the cards for the extra EX energy so I can kill him before he does before the cards hit me the second time. That was a solid gold split. Four second time save. 
I get a really good in-game time on this. 149 is very good. Uh, the IL world record is 147. So I was just two seconds away from that, and I did make a couple mistakes. So going to the double, I'm on pace for sub-38, which would be ridiculous in this category. So let's see if I can close it out. Ah, who am I kidding? I have the time listed in the description for this video and in the title, so you already know that I beat it. But let's see how this turns out anyway. I got pretty good RNG. The devil's hitbox is very tricky. Sometimes you could hit him, yeah, with a whetstone right there, right when he's moving his head in the middle, and right before he uses certain attacks. His hitbox is a little bit lower than the normal. And if you do get a whetstone hit on him, you could use your charge, or you could use your spread EX inside the boss's hitbox like I do there. Whenever he does the goat attack with the clap, you want to just jump up and use your EX for hang time. Shooting the skeleton there does no damage, I just do it for fun. Ideally you don't want him to do an axe attack there, so you can just continue to jump and use whetstone. Here I switch to charge, because uh, there's no damage drop off whenever I use charge, unless I miss a charge shot, which is what I believe happens. Yeah, I, I didn't fire a charge shot there when I could have. Spread is stronger, but you miss spread shots in that phase from him moving back and forth. But I got a nice gold split there. And I uh, got the first sub-38 on this category. 37.54 on the dot. I'm pretty happy at this point. Let's see a big grin on my face. I'm typing in the live split race chat, saying GG, commenting my logos time. But yeah, I'm all smiles at this point. It's a very nice time. And there's definitely room for improvement. Honestly, 37 is probably possible, sub-37. I'd have to play pretty well though. So I'll come back to this eventually. Just wanted to get this up there with commentary. I'll link the original video in the description. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this video.